In this video, I want to talk about lists and segmentations within HubSpot. This is part of what makes HubSpot a really strong system for your marketing and for your sales. The input to the system matters a lot. And I do believe that sales reps these days also have a responsibility to gather intelligence and make sure that we have valuable and reliable data within the system. But that's a video for another day. So in this video, I will show you once you have your data within HubSpot, how you can make your lists and segmentations to make sure that your sales and marketing efforts are as relevant as possible. Because one of the core principles, especially in marketing, is the more relevant that you can make your communication, whether it's a ad campaign or it's an email marketing campaign the better that it will perform and segmentation is at the core of this idea so let's dive right in and i'll show you how this works in hubspot so in the left sidebar if you go to crm and then lists this is where you will find the lists that you have already built out. So to create a new list, you go to create list at the top right here. And here you can see that we can choose the object that we want to create the list for. We have different options here and within other objects, we also can see that we can do this for listings and services, since these are two custom objects that I have created within HubSpot. But let's keep it easy for this first one and uh, we'll use contacts in this case. And this is where we start to build out our list. Now here for filters, this is where the magic happens. We have a bunch of options here where we can choose how we want to assemble a certain list. So let me give you a first example for a sales use case. But let's say we want to create a list of contacts that have submitted a form, um, let's say this new event registration form, and sales wants to follow up with any of these people that they have not reached out to since they attended that event. So we'll add contacts that have submitted that form. And next we want to check when we have last contacted this person. So for example, we could do something here like um, last contacted. And then we have an option that this was before another property. And then here we'll then here we'll just do the last engagement date. One thing we could do if we want to do these kinds of lists is we could also add a property that uh, registers when a contact has last filled out this specific form. So that's something you can set up as well fairly easily, as long as you have one of the professional licenses so you can create an auto automation. But let's just go by the last engagement date because that includes when somebody filled out a form. And we'll say that last contact it was before the last engagement date. So if that last engagement was the form, they were not contacted after that form. So that's something we can be sure of. Now this could then be a list. Um, usually I like to preface these lists, whether they're for internal use, external use or admin. So in this case, since it's not a marketing list, but a sales list, I would say internal contacts that have attended our event. And then when we save this list, so because this is a demo environment, we will not see the contacts being filled out here. When you create those filters in a live account, you will see that this list starts to get populated. It will show you a preview of the contacts that match these filters. And you can also test certain contexts if you uh, want to do that. And then when we review and save this list, we can see here that we have two options for the lists. We have active lists and we have static lists. Now the big difference between these lists is that for an active list, this list will stay up to date over time in real time. So as new people fill out that form and they have not been contacted after they filled out that form, those people will automatically be added to that list, as well as the people that have been contacted after they filled out that form will also be removed from the list because that activity uh, will be logged. Then for the static list, this just takes a moment in time. So if you would like a list and you would like that that list doesn't change automatically based on the different filters that you set up, whether that's like you want a snapshot of this list right now, that's one option. 
But you could also create a static list and add people to that static list over time. So that's more of like a manual process in case you, for example, want all of the people that signed up for an event at a certain date, you can then create a static list of everyone that signed up for that event at that date. Or if you want to keep track of a certain list of contacts that you have imported, maybe these were contacts that attended a trade show, you could create a static list for that as well and add those people from the import to that static list. So that's one thing you can do here. You can also add a description here or you can add custom properties, um, which is something that I'm starting to use more and more. For example, if you have a CRM manager, I have a property here that the list has been created by then I also have created for, and then also the purpose of the list. And that just makes it easier to find certain lists later on. We can also exclude one or multiple lists of contacts from this specific list. And we can also exclude one or multiple contacts specifically from this list as well. And then you can also set the access for this list. So you can choose private, everyone, or specific users and teams that would have access to this list. Now we will save and process this list and that's it. You can start using this list. Now, just if you have active lists, you can also be an active viewer of this channel, meaning that you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more HubSpot excellence and we'll continue with our video. So you'll see a couple more tabs here for the lists. The first one being performance. And this is an interesting one and often overlooked because especially for active lists, this is a really interesting one to keep track of how your list is growing. So for example, if you would create a list specifically for marketing contacts or a certain segment of marketing contacts, you can keep track here how that list is growing over time. And you can even add this report to a dashboard to make that a little bit easier for you. Then you can also see recent engagements by people from this list. And then as you can see here, you can also track the count of contacts within this list that had a certain activity in the last 30 days. Like, have these people visited your website? Have they converted on a form? Have they opened an email? Have they clicked in an email? And did they submit an NPS survey? So this is very interesting information that you can use to gauge the growth of your uh, lists within HubSpot and your audience overall, of course. Here you can see the different versions of this list. So every time you make changes to the list, you will see these changes reflected here. And then we can go to these settings again as well, which we already looked at when we were setting up this list. One thing you can also do is get a notification when this list would be edited or deleted by someone else, when the list changes irregularly. So if there's like a certain amount of uh, changes that's out of the ordinary, you get a notification for that. Or also when it reaches a specific size. So for example, if you have a goal for your marketing list, you can put in that goal here and you will get a notification as soon as you have reached that goal. And then you can also choose who will receive those notifications. So let's look at a couple more properties that are useful to create these lists. Of course, you can use all of the different properties that we have within HubSpot. And all of these are probably going to be part of your lists going forward. It really depends on the kind of business that you're running, which properties that you want to use for your lists. I'll give some examples that are quite common just to give you an idea. So one of them, for example, is page views. And this means that we can create a list of people that viewed a certain page on your website. So for example, if you're offering different services and you have different pages about those services on the website, we can, for example, say here that we want contacts to be added to this list that have viewed at least one URL containing, let's say, accounting. If you have a professional services business and accounting is one of the things that you offer, this is a great way to filter out those people interested in accounting. Another interesting filter that we can use here is we can look at our marketing emails and then we can check the interaction with certain specific emails. So for example, I have an email delivering my HubSpot workflows. And then I can say that I want people to be added to this list that clicked a link in this email. And then I can even choose a specific link if I want to. So if I added multiple links in there to gauge their interest in certain specific topics, I could add that specific link in here and say that I want only the people that clicked on this specific link in this specific email and these people need to be part of this list. And then of course you can use that list going forward to market more relevant information to them regarding that specific link that they clicked. This is another great way 
to make sure that your content becomes really personalized to the contact that you're sending it to. We can also look at more general metrics. Um, those are usually within the contact properties. And one of them that we can look at is, let's see, recent sales email open date or reply date, for example. So if we want a list of contacts that have been recently active with our sales team, this is a perfect option. Another one would be when the last marketing email uh, click date was, for example. So if you want a list of contacts that has been recently active with our marketing emails, this is another great way to do that. So you could do something like marketing click date is less than 90 days ago. So that makes sure that we're not sending an email where the last time that they clicked in an email was, let's say, two years ago. They might not even remember who your company is at that point. So that's another great filter that we can use here. And then, of course, we can also do any combinations of these filters. Right now, I just added all of them here. Like this combination might be a little bit too much for the specific use case, although it could definitely be a combination that works. But let's do one specific example. I'll clean this up. And let's say we want contacts that are in a certain industry. So let's say industry is equal to, they were looking for people in accounting. We also want that they have opened at least two of our marketing emails. So we'll go to marketing emails opened is greater than or equal to two. Um, as you can see here, these filters with like email opens are affected by Apple's new privacy features. So I would always have like a backup for those specific filters. And then a third one would be, let's say a certain form submission. I don't really have like requested demo here on my list right now, but just let's, let's just pretend that this new form here is a requested demo form. And then we want the list of these people so that salespeople have a list of contacts that they can reach out to that are in accounting, were active with our marketing emails, and also have requested a demo. All right, let me give you one more example that's a little bit more advanced, but has a very interesting use case. So let's say that now we want to create a list of certain deals. But we can also look at contacts that are linked to a certain deal that match some of our filters. So let me show you how that exactly works. So now, instead of filtering on deal, which is the current object, as you can see here, we can choose from this list and you will see that there's a lot of options here that we can work with, but we want to look at contacts. So now you can see that it says associated object. So we will filter our deals based on the contacts that are associated to those deals. Let's take our example for accounting again. So we'll go to our industry fields and we want to make sure that the industry is accounting. So now this means that any deals that have a contact link to it where the industry is accounting, they will be added to this list. Next, we could also look at something like, let's say within the deals that we want to check for just the deals that are not closed yet. So is deal closed false? And then we want to check the contact again. Um, let's actually do that here to make it a little bit easier. We'll add an additional filter. And with for the contact, uh, we'll do last activity more than 30 days ago. So now we will get a list of deals. And again, this is a demo account, so the list won't actually show up. But we will get a list of deals that are linked to contacts with the industry of accounting and where the last activity date was more than 30 days ago. So this might be a good use case to get a list of deals that, well, first of all, most likely will not close anytime soon. But second, could be a follow-up opportunity for sales when they have some downtime. Next, I will show you how you can manage your lists and how you can make it easier to keep track of, of certain lists within the system. So let's say that we want an overview of all of the lists that are for external use. So we can create views here with these tabs at the top. And just as a, as a reminder, those tabs, when you add them there, they will stay there until you actually close those tabs. And that is specific to every user within HubSpot, so everyone can have their own tabs there. So we'll create a new view here, and we'll say external. I'll make this available to everyone. And then here we can use certain filters. So this is also a great use case for adding those extra properties 
do lists themselves so that you can have a drop down where you select the use case for your list, for example. Then you can use that property here in this list to filter for a certain use case, for example. But for now, let's just have a look at the name since I do add external within the name. And I'll just add external here. I'll save this view. And now we can see that all of the lists that have external in their name will show up in this tab here. And then you can also move those tabs around. So this way you can create a filter. So for example, if somebody's working in marketing and they want quick and easy access to all of the lists that are relevant for their marketing purposes, or maybe specifically for email marketing even, this is a great way to create those filters and make sure that they can easily find the lists that they need. Now that was it for this video. If you like this video, I'm pretty sure you will like this video with my top five tips for email marketing within HubSpot. And I'll see you in the next video for more HubSpot excellence. Bye.